We started at the end of the Sermon on the Mount because what Jesus does in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, this is his first big message in front of several thousand people. This is his kind of announcement of the kingdom and him bringing the kingdom of God from heaven to earth. And he's laying out what all that looks like. And the reason he's laying that out at the end of it, he says, if you put these teachings in place in your life, you will have a foundation that is strong and that can survive every storm. Amen, somebody? And so we've been looking at those things. We've been looking at these things that Jesus said, put these teachings in place in your life to build a strong foundation. And we're coming to the end of that today. And uh, we're going to be moving on to some other stuff in the next few weeks. And so, uh, but we're going to end this message here. We're going to start in Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to just, again, I like, I don't know why, I don't know if you noticed this about my teaching and preaching, but I like to start at the end sometimes, and then a lot of times, and reverse engineer it back to where that, to where Jesus, how we got to that point. And so this is Jesus' close, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, and then I'm going to, I'm not going to probably read it, but I will talk about some other stuff that leads into this as we end this, this idea of the teachings that build that foundation to survive every storm. Amen. You guys ready to go? Let's do it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Jesus is speaking. He says, Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. That's a fun one, isn't it? That's a super fun, encouraging scripture this morning, and uh, we're going to get into it today. I believe God's going to speak to us powerfully. Let's go. You guys ready? Yes. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence, your anointing here, God, that breaks the yoke, that destroys the chains, that removes the burden, that sets us free to live the lives that you have called us and created us to live that is only found in you. And Lord, I thank you for gathering us here today with other like-minded brothers and sisters in Christ, God, other like-minded people who are living the red life and pursuing you and pursuing the redeemed life that you have for us, God. And I pray, Father, that we will continue to grow in that together in this moment today as we allow you to speak to us in a very real and powerful way, Father. God, beyond just the pages on the, the, the words on the page, but Lord, with an, an encounter with your presence and with the person of yourself, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Put your hand on your belly somewhere. Everybody at home, everybody in the room, just put your hand on your belly. We're going to ask God to speak to our hearts, to speak, to deposit the seed of the word of God on the inside of our spirits today. Would you just repeat this prayer after me? Say, Jesus, speak to me today. Open up my eyes. Open up my ears. Let me see what you want me to see. Let me hear what you want me to hear. So I can do what you want me to do and be everything you've called me to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. This is, uh, I'm going to show you a few pictures here. Uh, you, you might see me freak out and have an anxiety attack. I might rip my shirt off and run out of the room. I don't know because this really does freak me the heck out. Uh, have you ever heard of spurlunking? You ever heard of this? Spurlunking? Isn't that a fun word to say? Uh, if you don't know what spurlunking is, it's, it's uh, psychopaths who uh, go deep into the cave underground and... <laughs> These, these, these crazy people uh, wiggle their way and worm their way through places, you know, sometimes hundreds of feet under the earth through rock. And uh, this is some of the pictures that show, show just go through this, uh, uh, follow my cue here. Like you might be, you might be, <laughs> honestly, God, as soon as I turned around and saw that, my heart started beating fast and I started to lose my breath. That, that freaks me the heck out. Because not only are you in this tight space, but you are like several hundred feet under the ground. If it goes bad, it's, you're done. You, go to the next one. Go to the next one here. Look at this dude right here. Look at this, look at this crazy person. What kind, who, who would, <laughs> honest to God, these guys need to be on medication, man. That, I mean, can you imagine? This is crazy. And he looks like he's, he looks like he's having a good time. I don't know. Does this make anybody else nervous? I'm sweating right now, and I sweat anyway, but I'm sweating right now. It may look cool right here, but all this is just moist right now under here because of that. Go, go. That's right. I have worked that word in. That was awesome. Uh, okay, go to the next one here. Look at this. Look at this guy. Look. Does, that, does anybody think that looks, if you think that that looks, so you are, you, Aaron, get her to the doctor, betterhelp.com. You don't even have to go. You can go right online. 
it's, uh, it's pretty, I th- I've heard it's pretty cool. <laughs> now, hang on, this next one, this next one, honestly, I might pass out, I, and I know what's coming, but this next one is worse than all the other ones. I think it's the next one. Go, go to this next one right here. Underwater! There are people that do this underwater with scuba gear. <laughs> What is happening? This is insane. Can you imagine your whole week? You're working, and all week long, you're going to a job so that at the end of the week, you can spend your weekend risking your life to go underwater and get into this insane underwater. I mean, it's bad enough if you're 500 feet underground and things go bad. If you're underwater, what happens if that tank stops working? This is great. Why? What's going on here? Okay, now that I faced, this is even, it's so big. If this wasn't so, I mean, this is, makes it even scarier. Okay, anyway. All right, here's the deal. Jesus says, that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. A few verses before that to set this up, Jesus says after he's talked about prayer, he's talked about giving, he's talked about fasting, he's talked about loving your neighbor, treating people properly, divorce, remarriage, the, the whole nine yards, how to handle ourselves in business and all the things that re- and is basically the whole thing is this is how you represent the kingdom of God and live as a citizen of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Follow what I'm saying? And then he, and then he ends with this kind, of, this, this kind of reminder and warning to us because he says, listen, the way that leads to destruction is broad and open and lots of people find it. But he says the way that enters into the kingdom is narrow. It's narrow. And he said, and few that find it. Basically, see, when you get to, there, there are places in those caves where people have told stories when they're spurlunking and they're having this great time, nearly dying. And, uh, and it, there are places where they say, they say, well, we got to such a tight space that I had to take my pack off and I had to take my hat off. And, and some places get so tight and cramped that you have, to, you have to take strip down to just the bare, bare essentials so you can barely fit your way through. And I feel like Jesus, that's kind of the picture Jesus is paying of the entry point into the kingdom because there's some places in these caves and stuff that to get to the place through that, to get to see what's on the other side of that, you, there's no room for any extra baggage. And Jesus says, and that's really what the Greek is, is saying, is that he says, it's not just a narrow door, but it's a tight space. It's a, it's a constricted space. It's a space that you can't walk through carrying all of your extra stuff. Amen, somebody? And I'm going to get to, come back to that in just a second, but I, I want to be very clear here. Now, this is, I'm just going to give you, this is my honest interpretation of the scripture. Many commentators and theologians agree with what I'm about to tell you. Some do not. You can make this up for yourself. I'll, get, I'll explain to you where I get here. But it's very important because I don't know about you guys. I remember hearing that scripture in Sunday school and freaking out. Amen. Anybody ever stayed up at night thinking about that text? That Jesus, many, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. And will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, what if I'm one of those people? Well, it's, here's the thing. For, I believe, and I think that the context, and I'll get there to you in a second, Jesus is probably not talking about eternity, heaven, and hell when he's saying this. He's talking about entry into the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. He's talking more about living the kingdom and experiencing the kingdom of God in our lives on earth more so than eternity in heaven. Amen. And if you and, and the reason that we get this, that we don't get that, because if you just think back to everything we've looked at over the last nine weeks, everything Jesus, this is remember, Matthew chapter five through Matthew seven is one sermon. Jesus is talking this all at once. So it's meant to be heard all together as a package deal. Now, what we do, and I do the same thing, what we do when we read our Bible, we often read a few verses at a time or a chapter at a time. And so, and so, and if you don't read your Bible every day and you go two or three days without reading, I'm not, that's not, I'm not throwing shade, I'm saying, but if you take even longer breaks, then you come to Matthew 5 and you read that. And then a couple days later, you come to Matthew 6 and you read that and it's broken up in your mind and you're not seeing the whole picture. Amen. So remember, the whole picture is Jesus talking about living the kingdom on earth. Remember, he said, he said, he said, you start with the kingdom, 
I realize is my need for God. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And as kingdom citizens, this is how we act. And as kingdom citizens, this is how you pray. What did he say to pray? He said, pray this way. That the kingdom of God will come on earth as it is in heaven. Did I lose my mic? I'm dangling. So this is what happened. I tried something new, and it didn't work. All right, I need a new microphone. <clears throat> well, the microphone works, but I'm not going to take the time to clip it back up. So we'll just go here. Check, check, check. Mic one. There we go. All right. How good is that? Doing pretty good. Okay. Now I get to do this. <laughs> All right. So he's all this whole time been talking about the kingdom. The kingdom is this, the kingdom is that. Pray this way, the kingdom of heaven on earth. So, so in context, Jesus is he's not talking about eternity much here. He's talking about the kingdom on earth. Amen. And, and so, and so, and this, the other, remember, Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, somebody. But then look at the Old Testament. Moses, Moses was a prophet, the Bible said, like no other. But because of his disobedient act in the book of Numbers, God forbid Moses from entering into the promised land on earth. Now, are we, are we concerned that Moses didn't make it to heaven? No, but he missed the opportunity to see the kingdom promise that God had for him. Does that make sense? So when he says, when he's talking about this, he's talking about, about accessing the kingdom in our lives before we get to heaven. Okay? Understand this very closely. Access to the kingdom, listen, access to the kingdom comes through faith in Jesus. But entry to the kingdom, Jesus says, comes through entering a narrow door. It's one thing to be given access. It's another for me to take hold of that access, unlock the door, and walk through it and enter into that thing. Amen, somebody? I can give you my bank password, and you can have access to the $72.02 that's in the bank account. One time, one time, a long time ago, I left my credit card somewhere at a restaurant, and I didn't re realize it until like three or four days later, and I finally realized where I left it, and I went back and got it, and the, and the, and the, the person uh, was like, oh, we were going to have a good time with that. And I was like, well, you could have had as good a time as $45 of available credit could have gotten you, you know what I mean? And so, so, so I can give you my password, and you have access, but unless you go on the computer and punch it in, you're not getting into the funds. Amen, somebody. So, so my faith in Jesus grants me access and, and purchase for me, purchases me salvation. But my, as far as me entering into the kingdom life here on earth, I, Jesus is saying you've got to find the narrow door. Amen. Turn to somebody and say you've got to find the narrow door. Okay. And he gives us, he gives us before this, he gives us a couple of things here. I'll, I'll just reference them. You can look them up and you're going, to get, you're going to get plugged in to read them in the weekly reading plan this week. So make sure you sign up for that if you haven't done so yet. Text Find, hey, find the, find, find the thing so it's on there so you can do that. There's a, scan, scan it, scan it, do it, sign up. You'll get a text tomorrow morning with a, with a link, and you can get five days reading plans every single week. Do it right now. Do it right now. I don't see phones out. Do it right now if you haven't already done it in Jesus' name. Okay? You at home, do it right now. Okay? Okay. Now, where are we at? He gives us two ideas. He gives us two things to make sure that we aren't those who, while we have access, don't find the entry. Does that make sense? The first thing he says, he says, the path that leads to destruction, and that Greek word destruction doesn't necessarily mean annihilation or destroyed. It's a bad translation. It actually, it more or less means waste. Think about that. If it, it means wasted time, wasted life. So he says, the way to waste your life is real simple. It's real easy. Anybody can do it. The path is broad. The gate is wide open. Anybody can waste their life, can waste the access that Jesus' precious blood on the cross has granted us. Okay? But then he says the way to find the kingdom is through the narrow door. 
if I want to enter into the kingdom, I'm going to have to be willing to go small. I'm going to have to be willing to strip off all of the stuff from my life that can't fit through the door because Jesus is not going to share the throne with anything else in my life. Hello, somebody. And so Jesus says, Jesus says, you can waste your life by holding on to all these things and carrying around all this junk, your pride, your ego, your, 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 your free will, your, your emotional baggage, your damage, your hurt, your pain, your sin, your addiction. Your, he says, you can hold on to all that and you can waste your life and waste your time because you'll never find the door to the kingdom of heaven on earth in your life. And you'll get to heaven and go, man, I never experienced any of those promises. And that's what he's saying here. Jesus is going to say, it's because you never took the time to really know me. And when you know him, you'll realize he is all that I need. I don't need my past. I don't need that old relationship. Come on, somebody. I don't need that addiction. I don't need to hang on to that hurt. I don't need my pride. I don't need my ego. I don't need all of these things that I think are so important and so valuable. All I need is him. And so Jesus says the door to get into the kingdom is narrow. You're going to have to strip some stuff off, and you're probably going to have to get down on your hands and knees once in a while to find your way into it because I've got to go small if I want to find the kingdom. So be willing to go small. My old baggage won't fit. Listen, my old baggage won't fit through the gate to a new life in the kingdom. My old way of thinking, my old way of doing things, my old way of making decisions, my old way of, of, of worshiping, my old way of interacting with the Word of God, my old, all those old things, whatever they are, my old baggage won't fit through the gate to a new life. Amen? And we as humans do that so many times. We want to go to someplace new, but we want to bring all the old stuff with us. Amen, somebody? I heard a pastor one time tell a story. They were starting a church, and he said they were, you know, they were growing, and people were coming, and, and people started coming, and, and then, you know, they were, they were doing things new. They were doing different stuff, new songs, new this, new that. And he said the people that started coming to church were like, you know, we like it here, but, you know, we, we miss some of that old stuff that we used to have at our old church. We miss the books, and we miss the hymnals. And this is not to disparage any of that stuff. Whatever you connect with God with, you connect with God. I don't care. <laughs> And we miss this and we miss that. And we miss, you know, we miss potluck dinners and we miss this and that. And, and basically what they started doing is they, they, he was saying it was like they were trying to shape the church. They were trying to shape the new church God led them to into the old church that they just got mad and hurt and left. <laughs> Amen. And we do that in all kinds of areas of our lives. Right? And yet we want it to be new. And then we're surprised and we scratch our head and we wonder why it's not new. Why? It's because I wanted to go through the easy way and the broad way and the way that everybody goes through. I want to take all my old stuff and just attach Jesus to it or attach whatever to it and make, no, I've got to strip all that down. My old baggage will not fit. My old baggage will not fit through the gate to a new life in the kingdom. So I've got to go small. Turn to somebody and say, go small. And then after he talks about the narrow gate and the broad gate, he then says, he then says, not everyone who prophesies in my name, this is a few verses before, not everyone who prophesies in my name is, is, a, is actually a prophet. He says, and you will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. Hello? He says, you will know them by their fruit. Not because they had a good speaking voice, not because they spoke so confidently, not because they did miracles, not even because what they prophesied or predicted came true. He said, you'll know them by their fruit. What is their fruit? The fruit is the result of their decisions and their lives. Jesus has just, for the last eight weeks and for the last two chapters, Jesus has been showing us what the fruit of the kingdom looks like. The fruit of the kingdom shows up in how in, in the decisions that we make and relate to Jesus and in the interactions that we have with one another. Hello, somebody. And, and the reason this is important, because Jesus is saying, he, again, 
Look at it all together. There's a narrow gate, there's a small way, there's a tight way that requires you to lose some stuff, and there's a broad way that says bring everything you have. And and then Jesus says, now listen, there's these two ways, and you're going to want to go, if you want to go to the narrow way, he says pay attention to who you're following and who you're listening to because just because they say Jesus and look good and sound good and even sound real spiritual and even do this and that, he said that Look at their fruit, because if their fruit isn't lined up with the fruit of the kingdom, they're going to be leading you the wrong way. And he says, because you can't bring grapes out of a thorn bush. Hello, somebody. Listen, fruit is what makes the difference. And, and really what Jesus is saying here, don't miss this, don't miss this. He's saying, follow the fruit, not the gift. I'm going to say that again. It's for everybody at home. Listen. Follow the fruit, not the gift. Many, many times in our lives, in church world and in the secular world, we follow the gifts and not the fruit. And we think because we know someone's gift that we know that person, but we don't. Because a gift is just something that God graced me to be able to do. Amen? Listen, I don't care how big of a Swifty you are. If that girl, as talented as she is, if she couldn't sing and dance, you wouldn't know her name nor care. Because you only know and appreciate her gift. I don't know why I feel you pushing back on me at that. Okay? You do not know a person just because you see their gift. Amen? And what we do is we get impressed with a gift. Oh, this person can sing. Oh, that preacher can preach. Oh, that actor can act. And that. And we go, oh, they're such a good person because they're good at the thing they do. And you don't know them at all. That's why you ever heard that saying, don't ever meet your heroes, you'll be disappointed? <laughs> don't just because you just I know a guy's gift he might be able to hit a baseball a mile or throw a football you know over the mountains over there or whatever it might be Uncle Rico I don't know but but if that's but I don't really know that guy I just know his gift and as appreciative as I am and as much as I root and cheer for that gift to be the best that it can possibly be I've got to understand that I don't know that I need to follow fruit And we need to apply that to our spiritual lives too. Just because someone shows up with a good clip on Instagram or says a good message or does a bunch of, then Jesus goes into miracles. Just because you do miracles and prophesy and healing and cast out demons, you can do all of that in the name of Jesus and God might bless it because, listen, God's not about to let people die and go to hell just because the person with the microphone He says, don't get it twisted. Don't think just because I'm showing up in spite of someone's foolishness because I love people and want to be with people and want to heal people and deliver people and save people, don't confuse my showing up and my giftedness and my my pouring out my gifts through a person. Don't confuse that with my approval of the fruit that they're bearing in their lives. Church, we have got to stop following gifts and start looking for fruit. Because, and that's, that's, why, that's why we have so, I mean, my, I don't know if you guys are plugged into this part of the culture and stuff as I am because, it, because it's my world and it's my life. But, I mean, man, I, don't, I am so tired of hearing every single week about another pastor that we all knew of and loved and respected falling into some sin or some skeleton comes out from his closet, from his past. Why? Because we are so quick to build up someone because of their gifting without ever looking at the fruit that they're bearing in their lives. Listen, listen. Don't clap, don't clap yet. Listen to me. Fruit takes time. God can show up in an instant and give you a gift. Gifts are nothing. To God. It's simply the grace of God. Are you following me? In the Old Testament, a donkey spoke the word of the Lord. Literally, a donkey. Because the prophet wouldn't listen, and so the angel spoke through a donkey. 
So if God's speaking through you, you're on the same level as a jackass. Congratulations. Don't get mad because I'm telling you the truth now. Okay? Oh, look, they prophesied and they did this. And, oh, they touched me on the head and I fell over and I felt God. Man, that's wonderful and I'm so glad of that and I want us to experience God and all that. But listen, don't start following people because of a gift. Look and wait for some fruit to show up. How do they treat people? How do they treat the waitress at the restaurant? How do they treat their family? Come on, somebody. How do they handle their business? Or can, can you trust them? When they say they're going to do something, do they do it? When they say they're going to be somewhere, are they... God, give us some people with fruit. Amen, somebody? Make us some kingdom people with kingdom fruit. Come on, somebody. I am so tired. I don't know about you, man. I am so tired of having to defend Christians who can't show any fruit of love and self-control and righteousness and peace and joy. And I am so tired of having to make excuses to my unsaved friends about why crazy Christians act the way. Am I the only one? I am so tired of having to defend the actions of fruitless churches and ministers. God, give us fruit. Make us bear fruit. We love the gifts, but we need fruit in this hour. Amen. So, God, I'm preaching today. Don't follow fruit, or don't follow gifts. Follow fruit. Listen to me. I know it's an oak tree because acorns are there. I know it's an apple tree because apple trees show up around the ground. The apple tree might get up and sing and dance and shuck and jive and prophesy, but I won't know it's an apple tree until I look around and see apples. A person's, listen to me, a person's fruit is the identifier of a kingdom citizen, not their gifts. A person's fruit is the identifier of a kingdom citizen, not their gifts. Don't be led away from discovering your place and your entry point into the kingdom because we were so enamored by gifts. Amen. Follow fruit, not gifts. And so then the question that I ask myself as I begin to look at this and study this and think about this, the natural question is, well, well who do I follow? If I don't, well, listen, at the end of the day, we follow Jesus. I know that's something we like to throw around a lot because it sounds spiritual and cool, but make no mistake about this. Following Jesus, listen to me now, don't miss this. If you haven't heard nothing else, hear this. Following Jesus means obeying Jesus. Amen. I'm going to say it one more time. Following Jesus means obeying Jesus. It means when Jesus says do this, I do that. When Jesus says move here, I move there. When Jesus, what the way Jesus says to do it, and he's just, again, I'll say this one more time. If you don't have any other Bible, if you, if we seek to build our lives with these three chapters of Jesus talking, we will become followers of Jesus and bear kingdom fruit. Amen, somebody? Following Jesus means obeying Jesus. I'm not following Jesus because I showed up to church and cried during the worship song and lifted my hands. I'm not following Jesus because I have a fish on the, the hood of my car. I'm not following Jesus because I vote Republican or Democrat or Libertarian or whatever else. Amen? I'm not following Jesus just because I got upset about something at the Olympics. I'm not following Jesus just because I go along with some sort of stand. No, I'm following Jesus when I am obeying Jesus.
And Jesus said, if you're obeying me, you're going to love me and you're going to love your neighbor. And that's all of it. That's the whole law and the prophets. And I think loving Jesus means all this other stuff. And it might for your life. But at the end of the day, it's loving God and loving people. Whatever that means. However that shows up in your life. Wherever the Following Jesus means obeying Jesus. Okay. Now, Jesus, when he's talking about the, the, the fruit, you know, and he says you'll know the prophets by their fruit, not by their voice, not by their good sermon, not by their intellect, not by their gifts. And he says, because, again, you can't, you can't get grapes from a thorn bush, and you can't get um, uh, grapes from a thistle. You can only get grapes from a grapevine. The plant that it is bears the fruit, that, right? We all know this. Okay. Here's the thing. Even if, listen to me now, don't miss this. Even if, even if a thorn or a thistle could bear grapes, no one would want to get to them because their fingers would get pricked and bloody. <laughs> Amen, somebody. See, I think sometimes, here, here we are, here, the, here we are. I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm not just talking about red light. I'm talking about church in general and, and kingdom people. We have Access and hopefully, if we know Jesus truly, we have the hope of the world living inside of us. That is one of the fruits, right? That's part of bearing fruit for the kingdom. I have hope, the hope of the world, the hope of all eternity, peace that passes all understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hello? Paul would later write that the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the fruit of the kingdom. We have that. We have that. People around us need that and are looking for that in all sorts of places. But when Christians have become so prickly and thorny and thistly, no, it's no wonder nobody wants to come get the fruit that we have. Give me a somebody. So I just want to encourage us, listen, let's not be thorny, prickly, thistly Christians. Amen? Gandhi, Muhammad Gandhi was famously quoted as saying, I many of you have probably heard this quote before, saying, when it comes to Jesus, I love your Christ but I don't like your Christians why because we can be a prickly bunch sometimes and it's not just Christians every person can become prickly and thorny about anything it's, but we more than anybody because of who we represent and because the kingdom that we belong to amen somebody ought to be different ought to be different ought to be different listen to me family we ought to be different we ought not be reacting the same way to the things happening in the world that everyone else does we ought not be having the same knee jerk reactions to everything that the world does that everyone else does amen somebody because our first response and our first reaction instead of outrage instead of offense and instead of pointing fingers and instead of judging and instead of condemnation should be love, grace, prayer. Let's just, can we just make a determination? God, we are not going to be prickly Christians. I'm not going to be a thorny kingdom citizen. Amen, somebody? Because we want to get fruit. We want to bear fruit. We want to share that fruit. Stand me all over this place.
That's it. That's the whole message. That's Jesus. That's Jesus' mic drop. Is this warning? Listen. Don't think just because you're going through the motions, saying, Lord, Lord, you got access and you're saved. But don't think that that's into the, to get into the kingdom life. I got to go through that narrow door. And I got to be more interested in my fruit than I am my gift. Amen. That's it. He says amen on that. And that's when he finishes. That's when he finishes. It says, when you build your life on these teachings, you'll have a foundation that, listen now, that when the winds blow and when the rain falls, because it is going to blow and it is going to fall. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. Every one of us will go through storms. Just because I'm a citizen of the kingdom doesn't mean I don't get shook up and get and experience the same things that happen in life. Amen, somebody. Living in the kingdom and living out of the kingdom and serving and following Jesus is not a shield to protect me from everything bad in life. It is the grace and the strength to walk through those things unharmed, unscathed, unshaken, unbroken, unburned. When I walk through the fire, I've got a fourth man in the furnace with me, and I can walk right through the flames and not a... Not a, not a hair on my head will be singed. <laughs> That's what it is. It says when you make that, that's what will happen. That's how you can survive every storm. And I want to end with just, I want to encourage us to pray this way, and we're going to pray, I'm going to bless you. Because Colossians 2, 7, later Paul would say it this way. Very similar to what Jesus ends the Sermon on the Mount with. Paul says in Colossians 2, 7, he says, Let your roots grow down into him, meaning Jesus, and let your lives be built on him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong and you will overflow with thankfulness. How many feel like it would be wonderful to overflow with thankfulness and gratitude and generosity instead of worry and fear and hate and 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 every other kind of thing? Come on. Well, the only way that that happens is when I allow my life to, to be rooted in Jesus, built on Jesus, and then my faith grows strong. Amen, somebody. So I want you to I want you to lift your hands this way. I want you to pray. If our altar workers are ready, you guys can come on down and be ready to pray. I'm going to dismiss in just a minute, and I'm just going to ask. I'm going to we're going to make this our prayer, and I'm going to pray and ask God to help us, to lead us, to just allow us whatever it takes, lead us into letting our roots grow down into Him and do exactly that scripture. Amen. Somebody, amen. Somebody. Stretch your hands this way. Let's just make this our prayer today. You can pray it in your own way, however you want to. I'm going to pray it over us. And then when we say amen, you guys are welcome to come and receive prayer for any area of your life, any need in your life. But we are going to be determined to be kingdom citizens. Amen, somebody? Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. I thank you for loving us enough to bring us into the kingdom. Your word says that you have transferred us from the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. Lord, I pray that that truth would go through and work its way through everything in my life and I declare over us God that we are going to be kingdom citizens that bear kingdom fruit. Lord, any area of my life where I'm prickly and thorny and anything that would keep the fruit that you want to bear in me from being shared with someone else, God smooth that out. Get that over. Change me at the roots. And so Father, in that way we pray let our roots grow down deep into you Let our lives be built upon you. May our faith grow strong and let us overflow with thankfulness towards you in Jesus' name. If you receive that, shout amen right now. If you receive that, shout amen right now. Heavenly Father, let the kingdom of heaven on earth come as it already is declared in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.